I wouldn't say I'm a fitness nut, but I do work out for my health. Personal trainer, orientation coordinator, recovery trainer also. So basically my life revolves around training. Prior to my heart attack, I had no idea that I had anything going on. My cholesterol was fine, my blood pressure was fine. The risk factor that they said was contributed most, I guess, was uh, family history. I was on this treadmill the day I had my heart attack, walking like I was, you know, just minding my own business. There was a guy out here working and I heard him scream he needed help, so we ran out. And that's when chaos hit. The security camera happened to be pointed to the door, so it caught everything on tape. She was laying off the treadmill. She, I'd seen she had a big bruise on top of her head. Bent down to check on her and she looked like she was going into a seizure, to be honest. Next thing you know, sorry, it went from a seizure until she turned basically the color purple. And after she turned purple, we knew it wasn't a seizure, so we laid her down and basically started CPR on her. Phone rang and it's bad. <laughs> it said she's not breathing and they're starting CPR now started doing the breathing, she started doing the compression, so it was bold. She was working as a team with everybody else being around, you know, praying, calling. I think they called an ambulance about seven times. The doctor said that I had a 95% blockage in my left descending main artery, which is called the Widowmaker, apparently. I don't like nobody passing away on my clock. I'm gonna work until I can't work no more. And it's one of those things that you just gotta keep going until somebody else show up. And by the time the ambulance showed up, then I figured it was time for me to back up. They did defibrillator in the ambulance and her heart was started again. About that time, I must have been there no more than five minutes, I could hear a helicopter landing outside. And they were already prepping her and they told me that she was gonna be sent to the heart hospital south. I was unconscious for five days. They put me in something called the big chill chilling her body down and keeping her basically, you know, sedated and in a coma basically to uh, keep the brain from swelling. I don't remember anything from two days before till five days after. The, her first words were, I want a Coke, which is odd. She doesn't normally even drink Coke, but she wanted a Coke and don't take no for an answer, you know, that, so I knew that, yeah, that's the same woman. Travis is, is a hero. He saved my life for sure. The doctor said that if it had been a minute longer that my heart wasn't working and getting oxygen to my brain, I at best would have been dead. <laughs> it's not every day you, as one of the doctors said, you snatch someone from the jaws of death. I learned CPR in 97. <laughs> I was a lifeguard here in Prague, so that was part of our requirements from the YMCA. And it's not hard to learn. Anyone can learn it in 20 minutes. And, uh, you know, one person knowing it and having the uh, courage to apply it made all the difference here. He's annoyingly humble about the whole thing. I don't want to see no one injured or no one hurt, but as a hero, I'm far from that, never would classify that. You know, you would want somebody to step up if that was basically your mom or your aunt or some of your buddy, your family down there. Everyone is just thrilled to tell me how excited they are that I lived, and I've never felt so loved. <laughs>